According to Rumi, how does love heal the pain of separation? What does Rumi say about turning the pain into something meaningful? What does he mean by hosting the beloved in our hearts? And how does this transformation relate to our everyday lives? The longing, the pain, and the joy of reunion. <laughs> In this episode, we dive deep into the poetry of Rumi, where he paints the picture of an ecstatic reunion with his Divine Beloved. What does he mean by making room for a Divine Beloved in our hearts? And how can, how can this bring healing into the wounds of separation? Rumi starts by welcoming the Divine Beloved as our guest, inviting the Beloved into our hearts and turning our very being into a garden of Divine Beauty. Rumi speaks of turning our very sight into a garden, a metaphor for seeing the divine beauty in everything. But it is not easy, is it? We carry the scars of separation, the wounds of longing. Yet Rumi speaks hopefully. He's telling us that the divine light can heal this all. But the journey isn't simple. He warns us of the dance between love and longing. We are tossed between the moments of intense yearning, the pain of separation, and suddenly the divine connection. This is the heart of Rumi's message. The moments when we are lost in the divine love, when the divine beloved comes close, are fleeting. Yet, they give meaning to all the rest. <laughs> Here, Rumi brings us to the heart of the human experience, the pain we all feel when separated from what we love. It is the pain we know too well in our everyday lives, whether it is the loss of a loved one, the separation from our dreams, or the separation from our sense of purpose. But Rumi doesn't stop there. He reminds us that just as the pain is inevitable, so too is the healing. And there it is. His sun-like face, the light of divine love, is what heals the pain of separation, the pain of longing. But we must open our hearts to it. Just like in life, when we are hurt or lost, the only way is to invite the light back in, to seek joy and let the divine love heal our wounds. Next, Rumi gives us a powerful image. The beloved's hair dancing to the wind of his love is like a storm wrapping around our hearts, leaving us no choice but to surrender to its dance. Just as the wind tangles the hair, the divine love tangles our hearts. We are no longer in control. We are forced to surrender. In the next verse, Rumi uh, illustrates the relationship between the lover and the beloved, a relationship marked by surrender. He speaks of the heart complete submission to the divine will, even when it brings pain. <laughs> Here Rumi reveals that true love is not about control or expectations. It's about surrendering ourselves even when the path is painful. The heart knows that when it is following the divine will, it is moving towards something greater. And Rumi tells us, no matter how hard this journey is, we should be grateful for it. Even in suffering, there is a sense of duty and honor in serving the divine beloved. <laughs> Even when the road is filled with hardship, we do it willingly, gratefully, and enjoyingly. And yet, there is hope. Rumi speaks of the Son of Mercy. A light that enters even the darkest parts of us, transforming us entirely. What a beautiful image. Our very being, even down to the particles of dust, dance in the light of his mercy, 
This is where the healing begins. In the light of the divine love, even the darkest, most lifeless parts of us can be brought to life by the touch of the divine. And then Rumi gives us a miraculous image. He compares our physical bodies, represented by dried wood, to Moses' staff. Just as Moses' staff turned into a serpent, divine love can transform our most lifeless parts into something miraculous. چوب خشک جسم ما را کوب مانند اساس در کف موسای عشقش معجزه صعبان کنیم Rumi is showing us the potential within ourselves Having faith and surrendering to the divine power is where the miracle lies Not in changing the world around us but in transforming our own hearts from within Finally, Rumi likens our nafs, ego, the most tyrannical part of human nature to Pharaoh. گر عجب های جهان حیران شود در ما رواست کین چنین فرعون را ما موسی امران کنیم Rumi is into speaking about historical uh, miracles here. He's talking about miracles that can happen within us when we allow divine love be our guide. We all have pharaohs, but through divine love we can perform miracles toppling our inner tyrant that holds us back. So what can we take from Rumi's words today? The journey of love is not without its pain. But it is in the pain of separation that we understand the depth of our love. And more importantly, in surrendering to that love, we find healing, growth, and ultimately transformation. Even when the heart faces trials, even when it feels broken, there is beauty in that surrender. If you wish to learn more about Rumi's view on challenges and suffering, I invite you to visit this video. And don't miss our next episode, where we will continue to unravel the depth of Rumi's powerful words.